Before we get started, I'd like to introduce my Inkscape beginner course. Here, I'm going to explain in detail all the tools, the tool sets, and features in the Inkscape program. I'll explain what they are, how to use them, and why we use them. If you'd like to check that out, I'll have a link to that in the description. Hello everyone, it's Lori at ArtitDesigns.ca. I'm going to show you today how you can um, use the pen tool and the power stroke tool to make lines for a mascot logo. This particular fella is a pelican and you can see he's clearly advocating for salmon jerky. Okay, so this is uh, just a mascot logo that I, I uh, sketched out and created. And I'm just going to grab the pen tool. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how the pen tool has a different sort of menu. You can use triangle in, triangle out, and ellipse, and you can also make your own shapes. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to, how to make a tapered line. So we're going to choose the ellipse here. And you'll see right here on one of his eyes, you'll see that it's very much tapered on the two ends, whereas it's more thick in the middle. Um, this here is tapered on one side but not the other. So this ellipse tool isn't going to work for everything but it'll work for some things. So we'll show you an example here. Just going to click here, click at the top and pull and then I'll click down at the bottom to create my shape and it should give us a nice, uh, what it does it just basically stretches a circle along the path that you create. So in order to change this we need to go to the uh, uh, edit paths by nodes. So click on that you'll see we got some nodes and handles that we can uh, change. So this one here will just give us, you know, the ability to change the shape a little bit if we want to. And this will give us the ability to pull in and out to make our, our um, shape thinner or thicker. Okay, so that is one method of doing that. Um, I kind of like the power stroke because it gives you a little bit more freedom. So again, I'm going to do the other eye, but this time I'm going to choose none. Um, Okay, so I'll just click here, click up top, curve, and maybe down here and pull, something like that. Enter. Okay, so this is, um, maybe I'll fix that. I'll go to the nodes tool. Anytime you want to fix it, fix the nodes, you just go to the node tool, and then you can modify it as you see fit. Hey, not too much. Now we'll go to path and path effects. Click on this plus sign here. And we're looking for power stroke, so we're just going to type in power, power, there it is. Okay, and I'm just going to leave all the de default stuff there. I'm going to click on the nodes tool. And you'll see now instead we have these pink nodes. So I'm just going to pull this one out. Make it nice and thick here. Uh, we'll make it thick here as well. And by the way, you could pull these, these pink nodes. Uh, you can line them up and down, move them up and down. I'm going to leave it back there. This one I'll pull out. It seems to be very resource intensive on my computer. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the pen tool and I'll click here, click and pull. And then we have this, uh, I need a corner. So I'll just press shift and the letter L and it gives me this corner so that I can start anew. And then I'll click and pull, click and I think I'll, uh, no, maybe let's see if I can just go back here. Press enter. Okay, this might be a tall order being that line is a bit big. We'll try it again. Go to the stroke tool. That's all right. And again, you can um, adjust. Make sure you don't cross over there. I almost did that. Okay. All right. Um, and you can keep going like that. There's another thing I wanted to show you is that you could just, like, uh, let's say, well, this here I could probably adjust a little more. And, you know, you could play around with this. But if there's, let's say I wanted it to be a little bit different, I could just use the pen tool and simply create the extra pieces that I need or want. Um, do something like 
that, shift L, and then I can just fill that in, take the stroke off, press shift and X, and there, you know, see, I, I've just, uh, I fixed that. So I'm just going to carry on here, press enter. Enter. And back to the power stroke. So again, I mean, you can keep going on like that, or you could just simply uh, use the pen tool, which is the way I learned initially. So let's say you could draw right here. And anytime you don't like what you've done, just press Control Z and it will undo. So important to note, just look at the green and the red line there. Just let go of your pen when it's smooth, and then it will turn all nice and green. And you just click and pull till it looks smooth or right. Uh, I think that's as far as I'll go. I'll go Shift L to get a corner. And I'll do something like this. And this is initially how I learned to do stuff like this, as opposed to you know using tapering tools or whatever. So that we've just uh, drawn a stroke there. I'm going to fill it in. Press Shift and X. Okay, so you can control. How it looks. Um, if you want something more symmetrical, you might just choose to do um, strokes as opposed to what I did there. Okay, so and we can carry on here just by clicking here. And his body is pretty round. I mean, you could, um, could pretty much use a circle here instead, but I'm pretty good with the pen tool. I'll press Shift and L to get my corner here. And anything you don't like, you can always fix afterwards, so no need to worry there. Okay, so that's another way of doing things. So you see I, I have some fixing to do right here. It's just essentially about making it smooth. If you want to snap onto things, you can use these snapping tools up here. You just got to make sure that it's enabled and it should be able to snap onto certain areas that you want it to right there so it'll be ex like exact I'll make sure the stroke is off it should look better okay so it's just stuff like that um, and like I said if I didn't like this I could like snap here and just fill it in And you'll find, you know, when you get to the end of your design that, you know, you, you're trying to be perfect things or, or such as. So this is round here. I've done something different here. So I'll just go uh, from the eye. Okay, I'll just do this. And I'll pull until it's kind of round at the top there. And I'm just filling it in, going back to the beginning. Oops. Turn it back. Stroke off. And we'll fix it. Okay. That's better. So just little stuff like that. So for this arm, I, I do have like a taper. So taper going in and thicker going out for his fingers. So that's something I would use the power stroke for. 
it's really a matter of preference, you know. If you want something, you know, perfectly symmetrical all the way around, or if you want to add character by, um, you know, making it a little bit more wonky. I don't know if I do like that. But, you know, this is just, uh, anytime these get in the way, just turn them off. But this is just a tutorial, so I mean, I'm not going to spend all day making it perfect, especially because I've already drawn it. You know, just pull the handles out and make it like you want. Okay, so let's go back to this arm here, and we'll again open up that power stroke in the Path Effects Editor, plus sign, power stroke, and then go back to the nodes tool, and we should see these pink nodes. I'll start out here, because that's where I want it to be thicker. And you'll see when I do that, it kind of kind of makes a little square in here. I don't know if I can fix that pretty easily or not. All right. Um, let's see here. So we can pull this one out too. Oops, and make sure you don't cross over it. So something like that. So uh, something that's important to note about this power stroke here is that you have to finalize it when you're finished. So in order to do that, we'd have to go to path and object to path. And if we look at it again, it gives us way too many nodes. So I'm gonna go path and simplify because it's just not necessary to have that many nodes. Okay, uh, same as all the other stuff actually, but I'm not going to worry too much about it until we get to the end. Like these are all strokes, they're live strokes, we'll have to finalize them too. Okay, um, I'm going to use a circle for the eye. Turn it black. Okay, I'll open up uh, Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and make sure my opacity's up. Just think. Uh, I really like this character. He has a lot of, um, well, he has a lot of character, a lot of personality. Control D to duplicate and just gonna place it here. And for this, this is what I mean by just using a plain stroke for his tail. I'm just gonna make everything symmetrical. So um, Shift L to get my corner. I'll just come down here, click and pull, and enter. So for this particular object, I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. I'm just going to go to Fill and Stroke, Stroke Panel, and I'm going to choose Pixels, and then I'm going to choose like 20, see if that looks good. Okay, so that's pretty good. So that's just another way if you wanted it to be like totally symmetrical or whatever. And I could have done that with this as well, just done a stroke. Um, But it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect on every side. You'll see, I mean, his belly here, it pretty much is, but it gets a little bit bigger up towards his head. Um, right here under his bill is a little bit thicker. So it doesn't have to be perfect everywhere. Uh, it's just totally up to you, you as the artist. Okay, so let's draw his feet. Just, actually, maybe I'll round his knees up a little bit. So just clicking and pulling a tiny bit. Just clicking and pulling. And if it doesn't turn out like you like it, again, you can always go back to the nodes tool and change it. Okay, there's a foot. Control D, I'll duplicate it. And click it again to get those rotation handles. And edit this node here. Okay, hide it in the body. Okay, so a pole. Let's draw the pole. And I want it to be hidden under his hand. So I'm just gonna press enter right here. And again, this line, I will make it 20 pixels. 20 pixels, yeah, that'll work. And I'm also gonna round the cap and the join so that it's rounded at the top there. Although, I don't know if I necessarily want it to be visible 
on that side. Okay, uh, do it again down here, the rest of the, the pole that he's carrying. Enter, select 20, uh, round cap, join. Perfect. Okay, now this sign that he's carrying, click and pull. Actually, maybe not that wide. Click up here. And end. Okay, so I'll select it with the select tool. Again, 20 pixels, 20 pixels. And you'll see we have some overlap here, but it's not going to matter when we color in his eyes. In fact, I will turn that red just so that we can see the difference here. So I'll drop that down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lots of times. Oops, too many. Up one. Okay, so it's under his eyes now. And when we turn his eyes uh, white, it's just not going to be seen. So it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, the heart. You know, there's lots of ways to make a heart. I'm just going to use the pen tool. Um, I actually do have a tutorial on uh, making, you know, perfect hearts. I don't like that one at all. Uh, using shapes, like uh, the square, for example. Yeah, that's a little better. And I'll just turn it black for now. All right, uh, the letters. So let's grab the letters tool. Uh, I'm gonna write salmon and choose a nice uh, sans serif font. I can't remember what I chose. work okay so I'm gonna scale it up actually I'm gonna X out of here so what we want to do with this we need to finalize text so that it's no longer text and I wonder if I should like maybe space it out just a little bit so in the text menu you can space this out right here between letters I don't know let's try four Okay, I'll give it a little bit of space and we'll go path, object to path. We will ungroup all those text items and then we'll go path and union. So now we need to go into the text editor so that we can bend this into the shape of the flag. So we'll go, it's still open actually. Just go to the path effects, click the plus sign and instead of power stroke, we will look for bend. Okay, and then we can just choose this button and edit right on the canvas. This green line will appear. So if I pull down on this side, this side will give me a handle, which I probably want to do something like that. You can move this to the position you'd like. Um, I don't want to see it, it's starting to distort the end. So I, I um, press control Z here. There, okay. So I'll just move that for now. Let's shrink this down a little bit. All right, go back to that bend. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So again, I'm not going to play around with it too much. I don't want to hurt the N too much. Inkscape has. Um, when it comes to text tools, it has kind of limited resources. Like I said, I did this in uh, Illustrator before. Anyway, play around with that sort of detail to get what you like. Um, I'm gonna fix this hard. Okay. Um, 
see finished. Okay, I think we can pull away the image. No longer need that. Okay, so what I want to do here is select select everything. And we'll go path, object to path, path, stroke to path. So that finalizes everything. Um, just want to double check here. Okay, that everything is... Okay, it looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so I want to grab the bird, like all the bird pieces, but I don't want to grab the... I'll just select everything and then come over here and shift deselect the text and the heart. Deselect this post here. Um, and deselect this as well. So if I select it, that looks good. I'll control Z, I'll put that back. I'm gonna go path and, uh, should I union that? Yeah, I'll just press union. I must be grouped somewhere. Path, union, okay. Looks good. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to fill it in. Um, you can use the paint bucket tool. This is, a, I'm gonna use a different trick. I'm just gonna grab a giant square. I'll turn it pink, just so we can see it. Select it, drop it to the bottom with this button. And then deselect everything. So let's select the bird. Just click on the black portion, press Control D to duplicate. And then press Shift to select this pink object I created and we'll go Path, Difference, and Path, Break Apart. Okay, so now if I take this away and press delete, and what we have left is, whoops, extra pieces. Okay, so now I can color these as I, as I please. And we'll do it again for the uh, flag in just a minute. So these, uh, these pink pieces, I'll make them white. I'm gonna bump them up a little bit. To, okay, so that they're above this red portion here. Okay, and then this, I'm just gonna press F7 and choose the colors I've already chosen. This body, that'd just be much faster if you choose your colors ahead of time. Okay, and then uh, all that's left really is to add the highlights. Um, Okay, I'll turn that black. Okay, and I will also, um, I'll use the same technique. I'll just grab a square here and I'll turn it any color, it doesn't matter. Drop it to the bottom. Press, sh uh, no, actually we gotta duplicate it. So control D to duplicate, press shift, select the green object and then path and difference. Okay, so then we can get rid of, oops. Path, break apart. Forget that part or it won't work. Okay, so we have two objects in here. Uh, the This is orange, so I'll just press F7 and get my dropper tool. And then of course these two objects become white. Okay, so it's starting to pop. You can see that uh, this text would need some more editing, obviously, uh, with the uh, pen tool. Um, let's see. Go back to the pen tool. So this is how we're going to create um, the shading. So maybe I'll grab the outlines here. Press F7. So it makes it pop when you use the blue. Much nicer. Okay, this too. I think these colors work really well together. Okay, back to the pen tool. We're gonna draw on top and then we're just gonna drop it below. I'm going to click and pull here, here, and then I'm gonna hide it in the blue portion here. Okay, so we've created our shape. I'll press F7 to get the dropper, choose my color, and we wanna get rid of this stroke here. So let's go over here, press Shift and X, bottom left. And it's on top. As you can see, it doesn't look quite right. So we're gonna drop it down until it falls below the blue border here. I only had to drop it once there for that to happen. Okay, and then the top, we wanna to create a shape that's white. So it's basically shadow and shine. 
say in here. And again, uh, I need a corner, so I'll press Shift and L. I'll just go back to the beginning. This will be white. I'll get rid of the stroke, Shift and X. And then we need to select it and drop it down till it hides beneath the blue. And then if it looks too big, you can always adjust it. Okay, so just pull the handle. There, that's all right. Uh, a little bit here. So we'll grab the pen tool. Uh, Shift L. So I'm drawing on top and I'm just dropping it afterwards. And then uh, I need a light or dark blue. So F7, I'm going to borrow this color and I'm going to take the stroke off. It gets a little repetitive after a while. We'll select it, drop it down one, two, two times for that one. And again, if we want to, you know, smooth that out a little bit, we can. Something like that. And then there's some on his tail and some on his hand. So start here. We go halfway or so. Shift L. Oops, I'm pressing the wrong button here. Okay, and F7, borrow the color, take the stroke off, drop it down, select it, and drop it one, two, two times. Okay, again with the pen tool, we'll do a little bit on the top here, and maybe right here. F7, D is also for the, the color, the dropper color. D is your shortcut for here. I don't know why F7 works for me. Maybe it doesn't for everybody. Anyway, stroke off, select, drop down one, one time. Select one, two, two times. And a little bit for his tummy. Yeah, okay. So I've gone from about here to about here. And I think I won't go that far. I'll go like so. And Shift L, get my corner, that way I can hide it better. Okay, turn it white, get rid of the stroke, F, uh, Shift X, select, drop it down one, two, two times, and adjust if necessary. Anyway, that is how you can draw a mascot logo from Sketch using Inkscape. Uh, today we learned about Power Stroke and using the Pen Tool, Pen Tool Options, uh, in order to create a really cool mascot design in Inkscape. If you uh, benefited from this tutorial at all, please do hit that like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.